Hey there, I'm Heather Beadle, and today I'm going to be talking about seismic attributes for fault identification and analysis. We're going to quickly explore how different seismic attributes can be used to highlight faults and improve our understanding of subsurface structures. There's a variety of seismic attributes from coherence to curvature and aberrancy, which can be used to highlight faults. You want to also make sure that you do proper data conditioning of your seismic data to address shortcomings in migrated seismic data. And this could range from sharpening your reflector terminations, applying processes to balance your bandwidth, um, suppressing noise, uh, flattening your gathers, and also you can apply filters such as structure-oriented filtering to sharpen your seismic data. The first attributes you want to calculate are dip magnitude and azimuth. And these allow you to align your algorithms with the dipping structure of your subsurface. It's really important to consider dip in running all of your algorithms because if you calculate dip across a certain time, you may not get the same coherence patterns that you would if you account for the dipping structure of the subsurface. After calculating dip, coherence is the next structural attribute that you will want to measure as it measures the lateral discontinuities and helps in mapping faults and stratigraphic edges. And it's extremely useful in portraying stratigraphic plays and their associated faults. Another attribute you can run is curvature, which measures lateral changes in structural orientation and helps in identifying folds, flexures, and faults. Oftentimes we co-render the most positive and most negative curvatures to help us find the faults as shown here. Aberrancy is another structural attribute that can be used to help identify faults and fault offsets, oftentimes ones that are below resolution. You can measure aberrancy in terms of its magnitude and its orientation. At ASPE, we've been finding it very useful to look beyond just the broadband attributes. Shown here, we've got broadband coherency in that we start to separate out different spectral voices of the seismic. So now in this example, we're seeing the multispectral coherence example where we've combined several different frequency bands in order to get a much sharper and much clearer image of the faults in this seismic volume. If you want more details on any of these methods or to see case studies, you can visit us on our ASPE website. Thanks for listening.